Welcome to another video on Amazon Bedrock and Generative AI. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a simple serverless e-learning application using Amazon Bedrock Knowledge Base, Cloud Foundation Model, Lambda Function, and AWS API Gateway. This video is part of my best-selling Udemy course on Amazon Bedrock, which you can check from the link below. You can also check out some of the other videos as part of this YouTube playlist on how to build a chatbot, HR Q&A using rag text summarization and some others now let's go ahead and check what we're going to build as part of this use case in this section i'm going to show you how to build a serverless e-learning app using knowledge base for bedrock cloud foundation model aws lambda and aws api gateway now let's quickly take a look at what we're going to build as part of this use case now let's say you have a large organization which is trying to move its applications to aws and it wants to build an e-learning app which will help its employee understand more about AWS services. So now we have an employee who is trying to learn more about AWS. Now we're going to build this application on AWS. So we have the AWS cloud. Now to build this application, the first thing we are going to do is we're going to create an S3 bucket where we're going to load all the documents around various AWS services which the employee needs to learn to carry out the migration. So once we have created this S3 bucket, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a knowledge base. Now knowledge base helps you build rag based applications and it carries out certain tasks behind the scenes, say chunking, creating vector embeddings, storing it in the vector store. Now, if you are not aware of these concepts, please look at some of the previous videos I've created where we build the HR Q&A app. Okay, so once we have created the knowledge base, we're going to use Cloud Foundation model for this use case. Now let's go ahead and see how the entire flow would work. So we have an employee here and he could pose a question to the e-learning app. Say he asks which EBS volume should he use if he requires high IOPS. So this question will go as a prompt to the Amazon API gateway. And then Amazon API Gateway is going to pass this as an event to the AWS Lambda. And then AWS Lambda will invoke what we call as the Retrieve and Generate API, which is provided by Knowledge Base, along with this user prompt, and then generate a response from the Knowledge Base, which will be the contextual information stored in this PDF bucket. So that contextual information would be passed to Cloud Foundation model, and then based on this context and intelligence of this cloud foundation model, you're going to get a response which would be passed to the AWS Lambda function. And then that response AWS Lambda function will send back to the user via the AWS API gateway. Now let's take a quick look at the demo of what we're going to build. In the architecture section, we discuss the first thing we're going to create is an S3 bucket. So you can see here I've created an S3 bucket, Udemy knowledge base, and I have uploaded a lot of different PDFs such as EBS FAQs, EC2 FAQs, and some other documentation, which the employee might require to help him learn AWS. The next thing I did was I created a knowledge base, and you can see the knowledge base here, Udemy bedrock knowledge base, which will use this S3 bucket as a data source. And then I created a Lambda function, Udemy knowledge base. And in this, I'm using a retrieve and generate API to retrieve the context from the knowledge base. Next, I created the REST API e-learning knowledge base using the AWS API gateway. Okay, now let's go ahead and test this out using the Postman. So I have the invoke URL here. Let me just copy it from here. Okay, now I'm on the Postman. So if you have not used Postman before, it's basically an API testing tool, which you can download for free from the internet. Okay. So I will use the method and the method I'm going to use is get. Let me just paste the URL here. Okay. Now I can provide the key and our key is prompt. Now let's ask it a question, which is the best AWS compute service for event driven workloads. And let me just percent okay i've got a response so it says elastic container service would be the best AWS compute service for the event-driven workloads since it allows you to 
run containerized application. So basically what it's doing is it's getting this context from probably this ECS FAQ based on the question that we had posed. Okay, now let's try another question. So let me just change this. Let's say which EBS volume is good for high throughput. Okay, and let me just test it out. Let's do a send. So I've got a response and it says throughput optimized HDD and cooled HDD volumes are good for high throughput workloads. And then it gives me some more details. And again, the data source for this is probably this document here the EBS FAQs. Now what we can also do through this retrieve and generate APIs, not only get the answers, but also the citations of where that answer has been derived from. So I made some minor changes to the Lambda function. And now you can see it's going to provide a more detailed answer. And it will also provide the source from which it has derived this answer. So I'll keep the question same and let me do a send. And now we can see it's giving me a response. So it's giving me a lot more information. So here is the text which we got earlier on throughput optimize and cold HDD. But now you can see it's also giving the citation of where it has derived this text from and what is the URL. So it will also show the URL. So you can see it's showing the URL from which it has got this answer. So it seems to be the EC2 FAQ. So if I just go here, it's basically this EC2 FAQs from this particular document. So this is what we're going to build as part of this use case. I'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you. So now let's go ahead and create Amazon Bedrock knowledge base. But before we do that, there are a couple of things I just want to tell you. So the region I'm going to use for this section is US West, US West 2. So if you're following along, please use this region um, because some of the services are not supported in the US East at this point of time maybe few months down the line they might be available in all the regions so you can use any of them but for now i'm just going to use us west 2 okay the second thing is that you cannot create amazon bedrock knowledge base if you have logged in as a root user so what you'll have to do is you will have to create an i am user so you can see here i've created an i am user rahul underscore admin so that's what you will have to do if you don't know how to do that let me just quickly show you so in the search bar just search for i am and go to this service then click on users on the left and just click on create user let's say demo udemy and then just click on next then you can either add it to a group but i will just attach the policy directly so click on this attach policy directly and just give it admin access and just do a next and just do a create user now you can see i have this demo udemy user just click on this and just go on this security credentials and then click on this enable console access so just click on this and select enable and just do an apply and then you can see it has given you this console sign in link so just copy this or download this CSV file. These three data points would be in this CSV file. Then use this console sign in URL and this username and password. And then just click on this, do a sign out and then log in through the URL and username password that I just showed you. So once you have done that, then you can go ahead and create the knowledge base. So as I already said, I have logged in as an IAM user and not the root. So let me just go to Amazon Bedrock. So I will say Amazon Bedrock and just click on this. So now I'm on the Amazon Bedrock service. So what I've done is I've also created a step by step guide on how to create this e-learning application. Okay, the first thing is identifying the data source. So we have to create an S3 bucket and upload all the relevant files which we want the user to be able to access as part of this e-learning platform. So I'll just go here. So I'm already on the bedrock. So let me just do a duplicate. Search for S3. Okay, I'm on the S3 service. So let me just create a bucket and you can see AWS region. I have to provide US West 2. 
so i have to give a bucket name so let me say udemy and let's say knowledge base and so i've given it name udemy knowledge base maybe i'll just put a underscore here and let me just do a create bucket okay so it's saying an invalid character so maybe i'll just remove that and do a create bucket okay my s3 bucket now has been created so as part of this use case i've downloaded all the aws documents around say amazon ec2 faqs ecs faqs lambda and all these documents which we will use as our internal data source so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back to this s3 bucket so let me just search for udemy and you can see i have this udemy knowledge base here the bucket i just created so i'll just do an upload so i will just do an add file so i'm in this desktop folder knowledge base and let me just select all files and just do an open and do an upload so you can see it's uploading all these documents okay good now i think we are done so now let me go to amazon bedrock and click on these three lines and under orchestration you can see i have on the left knowledge base so i'll just click on knowledge base now before i create this knowledge base if you are following along i just want to highlight or warn you that there's going to be some cost involved in creating knowledge base because we're going to create aws open search serverless vector store and that costs about 50 cents per hour and then there's going to be small cost on s3 rds etc so you can assume for every hour of knowledge base and open search that's running it will cost you an hourly charge of about between 50 cents to one dollar now if i just click on create knowledge base and you have to just give a name so let me call it udemy bedrock and knowledge base and you can just give some description uh, e-learning use case okay and you can you have to create an IAM role so you can either create your own or use an existing service role so I'll just create and use a new service role so you can leave it as it is then you have tags I'm not going to put any tags so let's click on next so the first thing as we had discussed earlier when you're creating a data ingestion pipeline and that's essentially what a knowledge base does so you have to first select or choose a s3 location so i'll just click on browse s3 and we created this udemy knowledge base so i'll just click on this so once we have selected the data source and as we saw the next step is to select the data transformation or chunking strategy so if i just click on this advanced setting you can see uh, one is on the KMS side, but there's also a chunking strategy, how it breaks down the text into smaller segments before embedding. So either you can use default chunking, which is about 300 tokens, or you can also select fixed size chunking or no chunking. So we'll just go with default and I'll just click on next. The third step is to pass these data chunks through an embeddings model. So right now it supports Titan embeddings from Amazon, then embed English from Cohere, embed multilingual from Cohere again. So I'll just go with uh, Titan embeddings. And then finally, you have to select the vector database. And for that, you have four options. So either you can just use the default one and it will use Amazon open search serverless vector store. And that's where I said, it's going to cost about 50 cents per hour. It's a serverless store, or you can choose your own. So if I just click on this, you can see you either have Amazon Aurora, Redis Enterprise Cloud, Pinecone, etc. So I'll just go with the default one and I'll just click on this. So what it'll do is it will create the vector store for me. And then I'll just click on next. And then you can just review all of this and just click on create knowledge base. So now it's going to take about four to five minutes to create this knowledge base. So I'll just pause the video for now. Okay, I just waited about five minutes and now this knowledge base is ready. So one important thing we have to do is once it shows this knowledge base is created successfully is to do the sync. So just click on sync. And it's again going to take a few minutes. Okay, I just waited a few minutes. Now you 
can see it's showing us sync completed for data source. Now the easiest way to access this knowledge base is from the console itself. And we earlier discussed that this is a rag based solution. So we also have to select what is the foundation model we can use. So on the right, you can see, I can just click on select model. But if you are accessing it through the UI, for now it is only supporting Anthropic. So you can see model provider Anthropic and then I can select the model type. So let me just select this one and then I just do a apply. Okay. Now I can ask it some questions and as a combination of this cloud foundation model and the data we have in our knowledge base, it's going to be able to respond to our questions. Okay. So let me ask it a question, which EBS volume in AWS can I use for high throughput? So you can see uh, we had actually uploaded in the S3 bucket the FAQ for EBS. Now let's see what the response it gives. So you can see retrieving and generating a response. So it says the throughput optimized HDD and cold HDD EBS volume types can be used for high throughput wo workloads, which is correct. Now let's ask it another question, which EBS volume for high IOPS. Okay. And let me just click on this. And you can see it says provisioned IOPS SSD, uh, I01 and I02 volumes are designed for workloads that require high IOPS like transactional or database workload. So it will also show you like here, you can see, uh, show the source details. So it's providing you details from where it got this answer. So you can see here under source details, source chunk one and source chunk two. So providing you where it's getting that response from. So if I just click on this and it will show you the source of this response. So it is this Amazon EC2 FAQ that we had uploaded of as our source data. So hope this is useful. I'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you.